This episode of True News is sponsored by Surfshark. As we have been a few times, you might remember, we've been sponsored by Surfshark again. Sharks. These guys have looked after us. They they support True News. Mm. You lot have to support them. And you're also going to be supporting yourself by using Surfshark. Because Surfshark is an app and browser extension which basically allows you to place yourself anywhere in the world so you can look at any content from around the world or, say, look at stuff that you don't want people looking at you looking at. Spying. Right, yeah. You, you don't want people it. looking at you while you're looking you know at what your I mean? dick internet videos. That means you got to look after yourself. you got to protect yourself. you got to wear protection and that's yeah. what Surfshark is. Great. It's a condom for the internet. What's your favourite shark? Great white. Mm. Not on a racial level though. Uh, no. If there was a great black one I'm sure I'd enjoy that one as well. Yeah. Just to be clear. So say you want to watch, I don't know, Netflix in another country. You can. Do you know why? Surfshark. Sometimes I, I've finished Netflix in the UK. I've literally watched I've literally everything. watched everything. Especially, I've just had a kid, right? So you might be sitting at home with a kid or maybe you're looking after your little brother or sister or something and you're like, I need something new to watch. Or you're just on your own. Yeah. Lonely. Lonely. No friends. Yeah, you might not have a family Quite or long. a loved one or Don't a future in a relationship. Maybe you're crying over that alone at home. You think, shit, what's going to take my mind off it? Italian Probably. Netflix. Right, brilliant. Yeah. Don't go to French Netflix. It's too mia. romantic for me. You'll always have Paris. Here's the other thing as well. You know when you're on holiday and you're abroad? Oh, you can go and watch English stuff? You can go and watch English stuff. You know, that's normally a problem. Yeah, that's normally a problem. Best. I know not many people are Sorted. traveling right now, but say that you watch from outside the UK. Come As back many in. of our audience does. Yeah, exactly. I've checked the stats. Bam, here we are. Thanks. And obviously it encrypts your data. Let's just say anonymous online. What was the last dirty thing you looked at online? Pogs. Um, P-A-W-G. What does that mean? Fat ass white girl. Oh. Not on a discriminatory thing. It was just, I just sort of, they all... Uh, anyway, we got an offer for you. So if you use code Geordie, you can get 83% off plus... Three months free extra. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not happy with it, just get your money back. I don't... I mean... It's Surfshark. Been, it's so little money. That's you know? confidence from Surfshark. Yeah, exactly. That's they, confidence. If you don't like it, have your money back. Anyone See if we can give you an offer. They're saying it was confidence. Yeah. It's all well and good you signing up to Surfshark. We need your parents. We need your siblings. Everyone around the table. You can't eat until you've all signed Spread up the word. to Surfshark. Spread right? the word, baby. Spread it like cheeks. And when your dad goes, Martin, not now, you go, 83% dad and three months for free. Are you and, really going to ignore that? Yeah, and, and your dad goes, pass the peas and you go, not until you realise, Dad, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're going to deny that yourself, I'm not sure you can be my father anymore. Exactly, yeah. And then you get up and smash the table. It's over, Dad. Yeah. It's over. Take the prom dress. Surf shark is stick my... it up your arse, Dad. Exactly. I don't want your fucking blood money. <laughs> blood money. It's time for True News. Brilliant. Surf shark! I wonder if Dana was a good-looking guy when he was younger. He looked very different. Thank you very much, James. I appreciate it. We're very excited. We got a sellout crowd here, 5,000 people, revved and ready to go. <laughs> Dana has, Wait, what? Dana has changed a lot, hasn't he? Revved and ready to go. They're revved and they're ready to go. Revved and ready to go. In a way, though, I feel like this is great to show that when you're, like, early 20s... If that's him in his early 20s, that's one mean haircut for your early 20s. Well, whatever, you know the, what I mean? the, the point I'm making is we all need to go through that glow up. You wanted to be a fight promoter and when you look back at yourself when you start a journey to when you end it, you're going to be a completely different person. He's matured. Do you know Conor McGregor's leaked his DMs? Yeah, you know how Dana feels. I empathise. Yeah, I, there's more punchlines there but I won't make them. Go for it. No, no, no. That's no, right. I like my face. So long story short, earlier this year, Conor McGregor wanted a few fights in the UFC and one of those fights was going to be against a guy called Justin Gaethje. Right. Some of you might know he's fighting Khabib very soon. But the point was, as Dana White alluded to the fact that Conor was not wanting that fight. Now, Conor went and leaked the DMs that prove he was after that fight and any other fight you could get his hands on and it was Dana who was not actually delivering the opportunity. Right. Dana White is pissed mm. because he's been outed as not telling the truth. Now, first of all, here's my issue. Why the fuck are you doing this on Instagram? What are you, 12? Any other MMA fighter mm. in the UFC pretty much has to have his people call their people. They take a while to get back to them. Right. And if you're lucky, you get the fight you want. Conor McGregor, yeah, just DM Dana. That's the mm. level he's mm. at. And that's another thing that Dana's probably pissed at is because every other fighter is now like... Is is that how easy it is for this guy? Yeah. You know, like it makes everyone else feel pretty fucking inferior. And guess what? 
Yeah. Earlier this year, Dana White had a sex tape controversy. Did you hear about that? I can't believe someone filmed a sex tape with Dana White and went, people will Dude, want gets, to see this. it gets even juicier. The person who was blackmailing Dana to leak the sex tape was the boyfriend of the girl who Dana fucked. So Dana basically would just fly this bitch out there, give her all the money, pay right. her for a fucking trip, then right. she'd fuck off back home to her boyfriend. Right. And it was sort of like, agreed. Dana White named his victim in 200 grand sex tape extortion lawsuit. The guy was called Ramos. Sergio, good on you, no, lad. No, 42-year-old oh. Ramos. A real estate agent and personal trainer pled guilty in federal court to extortion. Sorry, he went to prison five years ago and now he hired a lawyer who was also a felon to try and extort Dana again for 10 million. You got no money from me last time and you won't be getting any money from me this time. Wow. I've got to admit, I'm impressed by this. Dana, well done, Dana. Dana. You kept that one quiet. Just to be clear, Dana dicked this guy's girl down, paid her for it. Did the guy know? So this guy was in on it. Yeah. yeah he had you the, can't extort someone after that. No, nah, Dana's like, look, I'm slinging dick at your girlfriend and you're going to like it. Do you know how many killers I know? I'll send Chuck Liddell after you. This is what happens when you get any success. Back in the day, getting rich meant people would fuck you. Now it means people People will fuck you, then try and fuck, fuck you. you over. Brilliant. So interestingly, oh. Connor's gone his own road now to try and get a fight. So he's in the last seven days, Connor McGregor has claimed to be fighting Manny Pacquiao Brilliant. in a boxing match, Love which that. the UFC would have to sanction themselves because they own Connor's ass. Dana's claimed to have no knowledge of that. Connor's then contradicted him, saying, Well, you, you've seen the legal papers, so that's bollocks. Okay. Connor has then, in a matter of days later, claimed to be having this fight with Dustin Poirier for charity in Dublin. Once again, isn't sanctioned by the UFC. The UFC have then offered him that fight in a cage and said, if you want to do it, let's do it. Connor's completely ignored them yeah. and continue promoting this as if it's going to happen. Connor's getting the reputation as an absolute bullshitter these days. Like back in the day, if he said he was going to fight someone, he was there. Part of this is the UFC's fault as well. I never know what the fuck's true. Now from two straight guys beefing to two straight guys beefing. <laughs> Jeffrey Star and what looks like Nas who slimmed down. Jeffrey Star basically went into Nas's Instagram comments and said, hey, since you can't answer the phone right now, can you give me all the stuff back you stole from my house? What kind of lowlife fucking scum does that? If you need a return label, just ask. Just to be clear, that isn't Nas the rapper. It's just his ex-boyfriend. Right. And to be clear, when he says what kind of lowlife scum does that, you were getting used for money the entire time. Yeah, um, right. Okay. Just because you know, you've got to ask yourself what kind of person becomes Jeffree Star's boyfriend? A guy who robs him. I get that. Okay, there you right, go. Right, 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 Maybe right. the whole relationship was a sham. Right. And it was just, let's steal from him while smashing his back doors in a bit. I mean, we don't know whose doors have been smashed and we don't know where they I'm were I'm pretty sure uh, there was a moment where <laughs> Jeffree Star is riding his dick and then he pulls him close, starts cuddling him, just steals his earrings. Jizz in his eyes. Oh, oh, I've blinded me. No, oh, yeah. no, no, then no, you no, go, he's, no, 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 no. Right, no, oh, no. you better go and wipe them out. That, that's not the way it You works. better go and clean not them works. out. Not the While he's works. cleaning them out, no. more stuff in the no. bag. No. And he's like, well, I'll best be off. Not, not the way it works. If you were going to come on someone's face, that person would definitely want them to come on the face. So while Jeffrey's loving it, yeah, there's, it's, oh, it's everywhere. He's just going, you love that. In this is it. First of all, we've missed is the banner at the top of the... The orgy the collection. The orgy collection. Imagine if Brian bought out a series of uh, palettes or clothes and we just called it the fuck collection. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> You've what? got to say, right, this motherfucker. I mean, that is literally the face he makes when a cock goes up his ass. Sure, or when he is having an orgy. In today's video... <sighs> It's time, you guys. It is time. Jeffree Star looks as if he's slowly becoming... Who's the bad guy in Harry Potter? Voldemort. Voldemort, right. And it's been a very crazy 2020, let's just say that. Crazy? Has 2020 been crazy? It's been crazy? It's been an orgy for you, hasn't it? You know, mid-pandemic, someone goes, you know what we need? An orgy palette. How mental is that? No, right? give the, the people what they need, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, We're begging for it, Jeffrey. No. We're begging. Give us something that the people will love. <sighs> Are you going to give half of your next palette's profits to charity because people need them? No, I'm just going to talk about fucking everyone. Oh, great. Okay. Well, that'll do also, I guess. It's been a very interesting and tumultuous and insane 2020, but you guys, 
We're gonna survive. We always do. So not everyone are gonna survive. Just yeah. to be clear. That's what that's, I love about it. That's Again. one thing I do want to be absolutely clear mm. about. If we can ever say that about a year, not everyone is getting out alive, yeah, Jeffrey. Exactly. Yeah. And to be fair, there is no year where everyone's lived all the way through it. All right. But this year in particular, there are less people living. Through We're it. gonna survive. We yeah. always do. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. Jeffrey, mm -hmm. stop. Except the people who are dead. They're not customers, Lawrence. Exactly. Yeah, it them. Doesn't He's the other side, though. He's covered both sides, Brian. A pallet for dead one. people. No, Genius. Brilliant. I love the fact mm. that when the corpse of your loved one sitting there in the, the, the chapel of rest, yeah. Jeffrey Star comes to give them one final glow up yeah. before you lower them six foot underground. Yeah. Jeffrey, what are you doing? It's, I'm a necrophiliac. It's what he would have wanted. Yeah. What? Jeffrey, you're smearing your cock over his lips. Trust me, he wanted this. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure about that, Jeffrey. So what he did do was he made Cremated. a cremated pallet. <laughs> now, again, I'm just going to remind you, mid-May, height of the pandemic, <laughs> this right? guy. the height of I people love. dying Ignorance. globally. <laughs> and he goes, the cremated pallet. What a pallet. I love the fact that he's sitting there going, what's really on trend right now? Mm. I know, uh, burning bodies, Brilliant. burning bodies. That's That's, this happening everywhere. Yeah. It's all the rage. Yeah. There you go, cremated the, pallet. The dust of your loved ones all over your face. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> there he is. Apparently, he's a basketball player. Is he? Yeah. Not, he couldn't be a good one if, you you've know. Not, if you've not heard of him. So the aspiring NBA star went to Austria. Is that where careers go to die, is it? When things are on the up in, in your career, you don't tend to go from America to Europe. Realistically, Austria as well. It's hardly the pinnacle of any sport. Lots if you can make it there, you can make, make it, it anywhere. anywhere. Austria! <laughs> Listen, I'm sure a lot of y'all can relate, but sometimes when you meet people, <gasps> surprise, they're not who they say they are. <laughs> Says the man who literally puts a face full of makeup on to look like another person. So y'all, real quickly, Jeffrey Lynn got a little play. And Constantly in the third person. Oh yeah, well, I mean, you, you do that when you're not on camera. Brian <laughs> Lynn, <laughs> what the fuck? Jeffrey Star got robbed. No, someone just stole a, a few things. Now, I know, Jeffrey, you can just rebuy it. I'm not complaining about no value and no money. It's just a principle. I don't care if someone steals a nickel off your counter. It's wrong. This is the thing. This is the sad truth of the matter. He's going to get these losers just over and over. It's novel, though, isn't like, it? Do you know what I mean? It's uh, a novel fuck. But, they, but they're just like, maybe this guy will take care of me, pay the bills, and I'll just tolerate it. You know what I mean? And one after another, that is exactly what happens to Jeffree Star, where he keeps paying for these guys to live, and then eventually they're like, God, this ain't worth the money. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is sad, but that's the reality. Do you know what I mean? If all you do is fuck losers, there's a reason behind it. Sorry, <laughs> I love the fact. That mm. There's people out there right now going, oh shit. They've been triggered. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. They look across their boyfriend they're a... watching with and they go, you just using me for my Stand money. You need standards for a reason. And we've all dipped. At one point or another, but I'm, we, we got a, we got a hold firm. The next story comes to us from YouTuber Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight, the guy, or one of the guys who inspired me to start YouTube. He was really nice to me back in the day. Always had a soft spot for him, but in the last couple of years, things have been a bit weird. Like he's been accusing people of terrorizing him. A lot of rumors have come out about him. You just don't know what's true and what's fake. But I, I got, I've always wished the guy the best. He was very uh, kind to, to you and you. Yeah, first, yeah. absolutely. And um, someone's turned up at his house threatening him. Hey guys, I guess I should make a video about this. I, I need to be very careful about what I say here because this is now a criminal investigation. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck this wow. has gotten this far. But this crazy bastard's turned up at his house, um, okay, and you'll right. see the way the guy's are going at him. Right, right. This is real, yeah, I yeah. think. Come on, you fucking pussy, what's the deal? Where's the gun at, you fat faggot? The funnier thing, and I'm, I'm not wishing death upon this guy. It's either, weird, because the guy's got a, a, a t-shirt with someone pointing a gun on it, it seems. Yeah, from Abercrombie and Fitch, where only douchebag shop. It would have been actually funnier if just through the door, he just... I did think... Bang! Say hello to my little friend! I wouldn't wish death on him, but no. it, for the sake of the video, mm. it would have looked sick. It would have been fucking incredible. <laughs> pussy, what's the deal? Camera, this doesn't have to go down this way, buddy. You're a fat pussy. Yeah. You won't even open the door? Oh, I will. You know when people first start a TikTok and they have to act both sides of the role? Why does it look as the, if Boogie The guy is, does look quite like Why does it look as if Boogie has shot this from both angles? He, he does look a bit like him. Maybe Ooh. that's why the guy hates him so much, because he hates himself. Yeah. And then what, are you going to shoot me? Uh, no, I'm thinking I'm, my roommate will. What a reply! My, my roommate will. What a reply! You gonna shoot me? No, but my roommate will. I do. I do rate Boogie's honesty even in that situation. <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah. You gonna kill me? I, I guess so, buddy. Just give me a second to get my dog wrangled. You're a fucking pussy, dude. 
Oh, hold on. I'll show you pussy, bud. Oh, I got this pussy. Oh. I got this pussy, wow. said Buggy. Why are they treating this like some sort of siege? It's one fat man outside your house. <laughs> but the guy's obviously mental. Yeah. So he might have a gun, he might have a knife. When someone knocks on your door like that, they're probably not in a good place. Especially when they have a GoPro on their head. One second, buddy. Sammy, up. I want to make sure my dog's protected. Lock him in a room, man. You can see how kind Someone's he is, at the though. door. You can often judge a man by how he treats his dog. One second, bud. One second. He's treating it like it's a pizza delivery guy. <laughs> I bet he gets a lot of those. I'm asking you to leave. This is my home. You are not welcome here. You have threatened my life. I'm asking you to leave. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to fire a warning shot. <laughs> Fire it now! This guy's gone to the front door of someone else's house and he's bullying him. And then Boogie comes out with a gun. This guy, the guy's a bully. This is a nasty. If, if Boogie would have blown his head clean off, I would not have a problem with it. Right, yeah, literally. Not a problem. Believe me, that is my policy. So go for it, son. I'm all for uh, peacefully negotiating stuff. No, just... but Boogie's being peaceful. The guy's being an arsehole. Boogie's yeah. well within his rights to shoot this fuck. I'll give you a part. warning shot. Yeah. The other guy's going, ha ha, do it now! Shoot like the he's the out. Joker. I'd love it. Please don't make me do this. Will you just leave this property so I can leave? Why's this guy got a gun? I'm just here looking at it. Because I feel threatened. This guy's about to kill somebody right yes. in front of you. Why are you I'll, on this property? Though? I'll shoot to wound. I'll you, shoot to wound. You, you hear the, the tone change in this mm -hmm. prick's voice? Mm -hmm. oh, now it's real. Mm -hmm. Now it's real, bitch. Sam, please don't make me do this. Who's Sam? I don't know. <laughs> you got to say, Buggy is being very calm in the situation. He is calling him Sam, but we don't know why. What, whatever the fuck his name is, who yeah. gives a shit? He's just some loser who turned up to his fucking house. Regardless, Buggy handled this as good as possible. And realistically, the guy's lucky he didn't die. Because if you're being confrontational like that, that's it. Shooty 2988 more like. Yeah. <laughs> we are embroiled in a little tiny bit of a controversy with James Charles. She's got a cool cap. That cap's cool. I've got to give credit to Ethan. He's punching beyond belief with Hila. Really? Yeah, I mean, she's a pretty girl. Normal he's girl. a funny guy, but he's, he's average, you know Why what I mean? Why does this he happen to guys who do podcasts in America? They become distinctly average looking guys. He's punching like any respecting man should be. Right. That I have nothing personal about James Charles. And... My intention with this of calling him out was not, I don't, I really- I, I think I can actually summarize this. H3H3 released some hoodies. Not long after that, James Charles also released some hoodies, which look very similar, if not almost exactly the same. James Charles then was accused basically of stealing in the designs. James Charles then basically outed himself. He's not really designing these things by saying, listen, my designer just sent me a series of designs. I just approved these things. So really James Charles doesn't really give a fuck about any of this stuff and just churns out any old crap. And his fans basically go, James Charles designed this. When actually James Charles didn't really design anything. He just went, yeah, that's good. H3H3 then replied, and it's some sort of bullshit between them. No one really gives a fuck because it's a, oh, it's a hoodie. That hoodie is like our most iconic piece. I'm going to be honest with you, right? I'm, I like to follow trends. I don't always dress in them. This is a trend that's coming anyway. This kind of, you know, patchwork. Oh, they've they even thing. admitted, it, true that they didn't think of that first. So what if it, does it matter? Why are they pissed off yeah. then? This collection is so different than anything we've ever done before with sisters. First of all, it is the first time that we're ever using a different font for the sisters logo. A different font? James, you're spoiling us by just printing a word. Unbelievable. Fucking bullshit. We all have to suck these people off because it's like, well, one day they might, might come on my podcast. So we all pretend that we might like these people I while they do sell quite our like games. James. I don't give a fuck. I mean, he's very. <laughs> Outside of the idea that James might give me an interview one day, I don't really care. The point I, I would make is I don't like him because of the interview. I just think out of all of the top, yeah. all of that lot, I find Jeffree Star very annoying. I find him sort of mildly amusing. Yeah. I could give a fuck either way, but it's, you that's know, part of it, it's yeah. entertainment. By the way, if you like everything everywhere, there's something wrong with you. Hate us. We're you, asking you for it. You, you just spit on us. Well, no. Yeah. From one rainbow flavored YouTuber to another, oh. it's uh, I never. Yeah, he's come out as yeah. bisexual. Here's the thing: if you're gonna do a video about coming out as bisexual, don't do the title like that. Go, am I bisexual? Feeling a bit bi. Oh, yeah, feeling. Am I feeling a bit bi? Sexuality, the biggest question in the world: Am I gay or am I straight and just find Robert Pattinson? very weirdly attractive. Do you find Robert Pattinson weirdly attractive? When I say someone's attractive, it would probably suggest that I want to fuck them. I'm attracted to them. Whereas I can think that someone's good looking, but not be personally attracted right. to them. Right, like you and I think of each other. I look at you and I think, oh, he's a good looking guy. He's a handsome guy. guy. I'm lucky to have such a, you yeah. know, good teammate like that. Yeah, but I don't constantly think, oh, I want to fuck Brian in the ass. Not Definitely all the not. time, anyway. Not all the time. Yeah, exactly. Just occasionally. We have to I work together, Pick something up in front of you. Yeah, exactly. What it's like, that? why not? Right. Hey man, I'm not gay. I just find Robert Pattinson 
person really, really attractive. I wonder what Robert Pattinson would think of him. If we have an interview and we'll ask him for you. What would Batman Please. think of you? Dead he would make a good penguin, ironically. <laughs> Two years and we're going to see I never going. To be fair, is it Colin Farrell? Yeah, it's not a dig. Do you no, know what I mean? But they have made Colin Farrell up quite heavily in the video. Well, they spend less time on makeup. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. He's a good kid. It was a Batman joke. It was right. there for the take. And I can it not take that. Right, yeah. It's more of a Batman joke, if oh, you know what I mean. Oh. You're not allowed to say that anymore. But I went there. So, <laughs> but yeah, basically, um, yeah. I'm bisexual. When he said this, I went, uh -huh. what's the news? Let's be honest. When you do YouTube videos about drama, yeah. it's implied, isn't it? When I saw the video title, I went, don't need to watch that. I thought I'd never say this, but I'm slightly worried that people will get mad at me for saying I'm bisexual. That makes sense I really feel because for it. it's such a precious thing, sexuality. And the minute you try and invade the other group, they're like, no, we don't want whoa, you. Whoa, whoa. You can't be in here. There's only so many greedy people in this room. Pick a side. Mm. You're either gay or straight, all right? But when it comes to bisexuality, LGBTQ+. It's stuff. just getting a bit too many letters and then it's like plus minus divide. I yeah, exactly. well, I'd love to divide those buttocks and put mm. something right in it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ass juice. Well, so I thought, why not take my platform and just speak about it? I really respect Dine Abba for speaking about something that feels so personal on a channel where he doesn't speak this way. And I get that he's uncomfortable. Yeah, but I think it's good because his audience might be feeling like they want to say something in right. their own life. So this is going to encourage other people to do the same. Yeah, it's like when people watch True Geordie video and then go downstairs and go, Mum, Dad, I'm sorry, but I'm a big fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to hear how he discovered he was bi. In 2017, I remember my friend was saying to me on New Year's Eve that he is bisexual, and I thought to myself, me too. Was he saying it at 10, no, 9, yeah. 8? I'm bisexual! Just what? A, I think I might be too! Yeah. Can I kiss you? <laughs> We're just two lonely straight guys, right? That seems like a strange time to realise it. I don't know, it's a big time of change. It's like, ooh, a new start for me. Maybe next year I'll be bisexual. No, but like, surely the first time you realise you're bisexual is when you want to shag another man. Put it this way, you don't realise you're bisexual as you're about to insert your penis into another man's ass. I get it. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm bisexual. <laughs> and bi. And no. bi. This is the thing. Bi. Bi. I feel like Ainaba may have just misread his friend's signals. Uh, and while his friend was being honest with him, what he was really saying was, let's fancy, cop off. Fancy it. And Ainaba, instead of going, yeah, let's, uh, let's see where that goes, went, yeah, me too. Should we get some more drinks or something? Or a taxi? Yeah. Yeah. And his friend's just all night going, he's got like lollipops and sort of little sausages. He's just no, he, shoving. And then he's got one of those straws that looks like a dick. Right, yeah. Remember okay. that one? He's yeah, like... Yeah. Yeah, he's going up and down on yeah. it. And Adab is just going, boy, you must really be thirsty. <laughs> so, yeah. Literally. Anyway, he's just completely misread the side the entire time. The whole time. And, Love then, it. and then he wakes up the next morning and goes, I'm bisexual. And then he, he turns over and he goes, hi, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, aside from the jokes, we're proud of you, mate. Well hey, done. Hey, put it this way, though. If you are bisexual, you better get used to being rejected by a group of guys. Do you know what I mean? Like, if anything, it makes life more complicated. It was a joke about how the E-boys like rejected with, him. Oh. Yeah. Do you, did you oh, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because remember how four men... Is that why they rejected them? Yeah, well, no. Seems yeah. strange considering who they went for. James. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe they were like, <laughs> yeah. we've got enough, mate. We've got enough we've got over enough, here. Yeah, all yeah. Right? The car is full, all right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, the there's already enough sexual tension here. We yeah. don't need someone in the middle going, I'm bisexual. Yeah, there won't be any boys Wembley Cup team, that's for sure, because those showers will be action packed. Well, if anything, that's more reason to have a Wembley Cup e-boys team. Am yeah. I right? Yama, yeah. yama, yama. Mm. It must be hard, though, because for me, it's, it's a very clear thing of of like women with big booties. For him, there's just a whole variety of stuff going on. Right, yeah. He might look at anyone's crotch, not necessarily ours, because bi bisexual people don't find all people attractive. Exactly. But he might, you one day could be looking at another man's cock and just go, God, I want to suck that. I mean, to be fair, it's not much of a pivot from one subject to another, really, is it? Well, Ellen is the original, um, what's the word? Gay. You can't call her the original gay. Uh, the OG. <laughs> She's the OG. Good, that's good. Uh, right. On TV, that is, anyway. Right. Ellen has come out and done a kind of like a response to all the bullshit that went on. People basically saying the treatment of her staff on the show was awful. Yeah, and it shocked Brian as well because he realised, fuck, I can't do that anymore. Let's hear her sort of the way she handled right. it. If you're watching because you love me, thank you. If you're watching because you don't love me, welcome. <laughs> One thing that really comes across about this, I watched a little bit of it before. I, I haven't watched this at all. It's while. so forced. It's so it, desperate. Yeah, mm. and she's like, please love me again. I'm desperate. But also, like, you can see the guilt as well. You can see that I have done stuff wrong. How is everything? 
everybody's summer good? Yeah? Mine was great. This is a woman who used to be a comedian, and the delivery there is just... It's excruciating. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. She used to be so funny, but... She used to be relatively funny. For the time. Yeah. You know, back when Friends was popular and stuff. Mm. As you may have heard, this summer there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show, and then there was an investigation. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. Sorry, weren't you the things that shouldn't have happened? She's the gaffer, basically. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. I, I learned as if she was completely unaware of it. First... Bullshit. But people First say bullshit. Ellen was the source of it. But yeah. yeah. We have had a lot of conversations over the last few weeks about the show, our workplace, and what we want for the future. We have made the necessary changes, and today we are starting a new chapter. I'm quitting the show. That's not her taking responsibility, really, at all. We're just like, we've made the changes, and now it's a new day. I'm moving on. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Imagine, though. Like, yeah. the type of shit that she was accused of, and, and some of the things that came out were mental. Yeah. This man is clapping because he's scared. Being known as the be kind lady is a tricky position to be in. Especially when you're an asshole, am I right? Listen, you put me in a tricky position here because I'm not particularly nice, yeah. all right? Off uh, camera. Yeah. Just a cunt. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real problem. Yeah. It's a really hard position to be known as such a positive message. I am that person that you see on TV. I am also a lot of other things. I Sometimes I get sad, I get mad, I, I get anxious, I get frustrated, I get impatient, and I am working on all of that. I am a work in progress. Her way of taking accountability for this is to basically say, I'm a work in progress, sue me. This is just a car crash, to be honest with you. Um, I think any credibility she once had is just gone now, because if yeah. you have been accused of things, you have to directly address everything you've been accused of. Yeah. She has glossed over this, you know, like uh, she's on ice skates here. Right. She's just floating over it. She she ain't actually tackling what she was accused of okay. at all. I get that it's sometimes when you're a boss and you have a big production, you got to be a bit of an arsehole to people occasionally. That's mm. going to happen. Not so, like the way that she was, though. But yeah, that's yeah. the point. Occasionally you're going to ruffle some feathers because that's part of running a business. But she, she hasn't tackled this at all. So for me, I think you can just see in her face, liar. I, I don't know. In the long run, I think it has damaged quite a lot. You can see it in her face. She's, she's ruined from it like it's it's, uh, it's taken it out of her. we welcome the republican nominee president trump and the democratic nominee vice president biden this uh debate by the way was all about diversity in the united states as three old men of a white background discussed what they thought the future of the country was it's all about diversity the future it's let's all look at the future and you lot won't be here so, well no <laughs> Je jeffrey Starr says we all we all will be here. oh we'll all yeah, survive yeah, we'll be there. yeah yeah exactly yeah There, uh, Joe Biden greeted his competitor tonight as if he was seeing an old family friend. Hey, thank you, are good to see you. Within a minute, he's calling him a clown. Yeah, do you have any and idea what this clown's doing? That's it. what family is, though. Not only that, call a spade a spade. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The fact is that everything he's saying so far is simply a lie. I'm not here to call out his lies. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you, I agree. just want to make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, I, if you're going to say he's a liar, though, at least, at least, let's say what say what he's saying is lie. You know? Right. I want to make Mr. sure. President, can you let him finish, sir? No, he doesn't know how to do that. He has, You'd you know, you, you pick be the ahead, wrong Joe. guy, on, the wrong on, night Joe. at the wrong time. Listen, you agreed with Here's Bernie Sanders. He has the deal, ladies and gentlemen. He has the deal. Joe Biden's got the shtick, hasn't he? But Biden might have a point in what he's saying, but what he needs to do, it's hard because if you, it, there's that old saying, isn't it? Uh, Don't argue with a fool because from a distance, people can't tell who's who. So Which one's the fool? But the problem is, is Biden can't pull him up on it. He hasn't actually got the, the sharpness. If that was Obama, he'd be fucking all over him right now. Boom! It'd be like Boogie Night 298. Hey, hey, you just go, are you doing this or not? Yeah, don't make me do this, Trump. Yeah. I don't want to do this. To be fair, that's kind of what Joe Biden was saying tonight. Yeah. I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that because question? Because the you question is, the question Supreme is... Justice. Honestly, a debate, you're meant to be able to hear both sides. There are a number of times where I can't even understand what either you know what of these men are saying. Because they're both mumbling into a microphone. <sighs> there was an offer from Joe Rogan to moderate these two. that He would have done a way better job. Way better than sure. this fool who they got. The Radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, on, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? That's Joe Biden right. does come across as a, like a bit of a cowboy in a way, doesn't he? Will you just shut up, man? He's old school, isn't he's he? Old, he is old school. I mean, I, he's all of the dirt. It's clear <laughs> that Joe Biden has a lot of contempt for Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, they hate each other. Donald Trump just has contempt for everyone. A lot of people died, and a lot more are going to die unless he gets a lot smarter, a lot quicker. So, Mr. President? Did you use the word smart? 
Uh, so you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. Address the point. Like we're saying that people are dying here and your ego is so inflamed. It's incredible. The fact that he's pulling him up on where he finished in college is... Instead uh, of saying, oh, no, people haven't died. It's just amazing. <laughs> if you would have had the charge of what I was put through, I had to close the greatest economy in the history of our country. And by the way, now it's being built again. It's an interesting point. Would they have dealt with it better? There's no way of knowing. But, you will um, never know. But have they dealt, have both sides of the Atlantic dealt with this terribly? Absolutely. I don't know. L let's hear from Boris Johnson and see what Boris has to say. Give him a fair crack of the whip. That's what we've done. That's all we're here for. By the way, those two old men mumbling at each other, one of them is gonna be the leader of the free world soon. God Lord. That's mental. Did you say God Lord? Good Lord. <laughs> He's so shocked, he's not even other words. God, Lord. God, Lord. Please help me, God. God Lord. Help me, God. Oh, God Jesus. Lord. Baby, Jesus, please. God, do something. God. If he is going to come back, now would be a fucking good time. Last week, I explained that the number of COVID patients going into hospital had doubled in a fortnight. From one person to two. The context, Boris. Context. Oh, I know, this is what Boris Johnson's very good at. Listen, when Boris Johnson started with COVID, people said he was invoking Churchill. This man can barely invoke Jonah Hill at this point. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable what is going on. I would love Jonah Hill as well. I would, honestly, wouldn't he be great? But the version of him where he drank the goldfish. Yeah. That version. Yeah, I want yeah. that guy sorting out COVID to, ahead of Boris. To be fair, they say it's very similar behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we announced the package of restrictions and stronger enforcement. I've been a, a victim of that. Stronger, the stronger enforcement. Had a policewoman tell me to mask up the day. I was going into the train station. I yeah. was about 10 metres away from anyone else. Yeah. Come running over to me. Got to put your mask on. Got to put your mask on. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I'm not on the train yet. She was like, oh no, it's because it's in a... An in, enclosed it, space. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it, it's yeah. literally like a fucking arena. Yeah. The train station. Yeah. But, um, but I could see she was really like getting off on that moment of telling someone what to do. Right. What she didn't realise is I like being told what to do off a woman. So we were both winning. Right. And then you uh, said, let me bend you over this bench. No, 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 no. no. What she, did I, you do? Did she, you put mask on? It was sad in my head because I was like, Thank I could you. see you're, you're coming in your pants at the bossing someone around right wow. now. It's a bit awkward because in my head I thought, it's sad really because you probably got your job wanting to catch actual criminals and instead you're just doing sort of Nazi work really now by running over telling people to hire Moscow when I'm not in anywhere near anyone. You actually come over to me and got close to me. Was she wearing a mask? Yeah, she was. Right. Well, well done. Little did she know, well there, were, there were three pounds of weed in his bag. So, <laughs> normally. You know, while you're busy trying to catch the Normally when love. a woman's telling me what to do wearing a mask, it's a completely different scenario. Right, Lawrence. okay, yeah. You, you turned to her and you went, do you want me to put the mask on or put the ball gag in? Hmm? <laughs> We've been intensifying the local lockdowns in areas where the disease has been flaring up. And I, I want to say, I know how tough it is and has been for these communities. Fuck no, off. you absolutely don't fuck know how tough off. it has been. Yeah. You, you when live you're in keeping your luxury. bars open in Parliament or yeah. fucking 10 o'clock or whatever the fuck it is. Is it after 10 o'clock? Beyond 10. You, they're allowed so to do what they want. The only place no in Britain. No masks. Yeah. The only place in Britain you can drink beyond Why 10. Why is he not wearing a mask? The well, fucking well, prick. Well, he's not close to anyone else. Fucking not, prick. And what you don't know is this is actually outside. And I, I wish I could tell you tonight that the impact of this package has already begun to appear. <laughs> I love the fact that he says that to his wife as well. Yeah. The impact of this package, package has, has already, already begun, begun to, appear. to appear. And she goes, deliver the package, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Johnson's flying without a oh, license. Oh, Boris, relieve my economy. Mm. Basically, last week, Boris was telling us to go Weatherspoons. This week, he's threatening us with the army if we do so. Yeah. So, Get makes sense. Work. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing I like yeah. about Boris, consistency. Yeah, if there's anything you can say about Boris Johnson, he never flip flops. He's, mate, he's stuck with one message yeah, the entire exactly. way through. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. I mean, exactly, yeah. You will all die because of my incompetence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's and never quivered on it. In many ways. Yeah, he literally, someone the other day said that and he went, did I stutter? Uh, Basically, the headline says it all. They're now bringing in laws to bully us into obeying them. Are they substantiated? Are they fair? Doesn't matter because we will not question them, Lawrence. Well, we don't need to. That's Let the them point. get on yeah, with it. Don't question it. What I like is my freedoms taken away from me without any evidence to back up whether or not they should be at this stage. Do you know, like three, four months ago when we were in lockdown, completely getting it, but at this point, why are we now being bullied into doing whatever these fuckers want can us to we, do? Please, Brian, please, can we just come together as a country? No, no. In no, no, fining I won't question anything. No, man. please. Definitely not. No, everyone come yes, together. Yes, I'll do everything you say, Mrs. Policewoman. Do you want to piss on my face? Is Would you like that, policewoman? Ah, love it. A live reenactment there of what Brian said to a policewoman in Newcastle uh, train station. And now, 
Dr. Brian Bryanson takes us through the numbers. Last week, I suggested that the COVID cases that were going up that we can in no way take as actual fact yeah, uh, because yeah, yeah. the likelihood is that the case amounts are a lot, lot higher. It's way, just way higher. we're not able to get the tests. Yeah. My barber, for example, uh, needed to get a test to keep his business open. He had to drive into Scotland in order to locate a test the same day. He had to endanger people within Scotland. That's how ridiculous it is. So whatever the numbers of cases, the confirmed cases, bullshit. Shit. They're way higher. Yeah. What what that then means, the numbers of people dying in, in return, are, they're probably more realistic. So this is the graph that goes back a few months to when this all kicked off. And you can see the spike in blue of confirmed cases. Right. Once again, probably way, way fucking higher. Mm -hmm. Then we go into lockdown. Yeah. And you can see the numbers come down. Now you can see the numbers in red. This is the deaths here. And yeah. then as you can see, it goes down, 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 down into nothingness. Now the cases are going back up, but the deaths are no. obviously going back up a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but not a lot. And I suggested last week, before I'd seen this graph, that that was because the vulnerable people, the over 65s, who had taken a massive 90% of those numbers, were no longer here. And they'd been taken out very early on by COVID, which is why, in my opinion, the restrictions that are being put in place now are ridiculous. We've now got a graph that basically backs up everything I said last week. I'm just a fucking idiot. I'm just some fucking YouTube guy. Thank I don't you. know why the one, I'm the one who's having to fucking say, I don't even want to have to use my platform for this but no fucking YouTubers are saying it hardly and the politicians are talking absolute shit they're removing our freedoms away from us on the basis of confirmed cases and I do think that we should pay attention to that because we don't want the NHS overwhelmed again right. but the reality is the number of deaths is nowhere near the amount necessary to, to, to put restrictions on a 66 million person country when we're not even in treble figure deaths at the moment thank you Dr. Brian Bryanson we've got another another graph another as well. graph wow I just found this one interesting okay. because we're being told COVID, 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 be fearful, scary, scary, scary. And there are other things that are also taking people's lives. Right. And to just juxtapose it between other viruses, other diseases, other, other things to worry about, it brings it sort of home of how the media are over-reporting one thing and potentially under-reporting other things. So this is the flu deaths mm -hmm. versus the COVID deaths. Right, seems and very clear. Obviously, they're, they're different, you know, they're going to leave different lasting effects and I'm not trying to get into which illness is generally deadlier. Yeah, who's I'm, got a worse illness? I'm, yeah. I'm literally just talking about the reporting yeah. of these and how we're being spoken to and how we're digesting this information. Right. You've got the flu deaths in blue, COVID in orange, flu consistently, it's horrible for the uh, people of this country. Yeah. You've got the massive spike in orange from COVID and then it comes right down and as you can see, it's gone a tiny bit higher recently, but flu is now killing more people. Is she? Now, regardless of that, it's the way we're being spoken to. Mm -hmm. it, that is not being reported. Right now, it's COVID, COVID, COVID. Be fearful of it. This is the worst thing right now. Flu is killing more people. Flu is currently more deadlier. Mm -hmm. And we're just not being spoken to that way. And it, it makes me wonder why. And I think in a few years, this will all be more clear. Why, why isn't there more transparency, I guess, is yeah. what you're asking. And uh, why, are be why are we being treated like we live in North Korea sometimes? You can't do that. Well, it would be great if you are actually treating me as a human, not as a number. Chrissy Teigen posted this picture, which is is powerful mm. um mm. she is the partner of john legend yeah. yeah and they were expecting a baby and sadly uh the baby didn't make it through the pregnancy uh they went in expecting obviously to have that lovely experience came out without a child this happens to many hopeful parents out there and it's happened to a celebrity and i think good on her for posting publicly about it because a lot of people are going to feel like it only happens to them and it doesn't happen mm. to celebrities and it, it's happened to these people and she's just pouring all that emotion out there you know when you went through you know having your kid i was sort of worried and you know you, you, everyone mm. you're always worried to the better end no doubt yeah this this happens this is real life and it's just fucking awful so i just thought we had to put this in the video i also think when obviously we've covered a lot of people in this video who want you to see only their makeup side their fake side mm. this is a very real thing that Dude, shows that picture yeah this is especially so soon after i had a kid when i saw that this morning i was really quite that uh, is one of sad. the most like touching photographs you could see like that is her just raw 
devastated. John Legend posted about it as well, mm-hmm. just saying like, because they've named the baby Jack. Uh, Jack. Mm-hmm. I love you, Jack. That sort mm-hmm. of thing. It's just fucking devastating. I don't. I, there's not really anything we can say other than that. Like, but I just thought we have to mention it because these two people are they're huge in America and they're you going feel through them, this. Yeah. So Even if publicly. we didn't know who they were, I'd still feel yeah. terrible for them. It's terrible. In other graphic relationship news, I, I don't really know how to put this. This guy basically found his wife cheating and then forced his wife to cut off the guy's head that she was cheating with. Wow. He definitely laid hands on her as well. By the looks of it, this is a kind of lesson to a lot of people out there. Like, is it? Be careful whose girl you. Find. One minute she's riding this guy's dick and half an hour later she's cutting his head off. He Apparently could... he did force her to cut the head off and then he beat her. How did so he force her though? I'll beat the shit out of you unless you cut this guy's so head off. So next thing you know, she's at it. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. Fucking I mean, faster I think then. It's, it sounds to me a lot, wow. It sounds to me a lot like this guy is uh, one sick fuck. I mean, but she's also a bit odd to go through with it. She was cheating, but at the same she's time- She's fucked the guy and then she cut his head off. Yeah, but I don't think he came in and went, oh my God, what are you doing? She went, I'll cut his head off. I'll cut his head off. <laughs> She suggested it, yeah. if anything. She went, I'm sorry, this honey. This is the mildest know, yeah. shit, man. We could not put this in. This is one of the weirdest stories we've ever read. It's true. You know, I, I hate it when, when girls post on like, Twitter, like, fucking hate men or whatever. Right, right, And right. then you see a, a girl do this shit, and I'm like, oh. you lot. Yeah. Yeah? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Now, I know you love train spotting, and I know you love Harry Potter. So, what is going to make you more frustrated? than this. Hey. Train's coming. So this is the Hogwarts Express. Imagine the Hogwarts Express. Oh, fuck's sake. Unfortunately. <laughs> Honestly, when I fucking saw this, I thought it was so funny. Oh my God. It's blocked it all out. The whole thing. Wait for it. Wait for it. And, they've and missed there it, it. goes. <laughs> I fucking love it. I absolutely love it. It is amazing. The shithousery is perfect. Now, do you remember when I went on a podcast a couple of months ago uh, with Anthony? I do. Uh, One of our fans. He just made a video about me, this guy. Talks me up so nicely. Yeah. We got to give him a shout out. Bless him. He's, um, thank you to my YouTube daddy, True True Jordy. Jordy. Right. Some other girls actually made uh, similar videos, but (laughs) they didn't make it into the video. So, yeah. They're personal. We don't talk about that. Exactly. Um, He did a podcast with you and and a a few of the the other guys. A couple of the other guys. He's also done one with Believing Bruce, with Elliot, with a couple of guys and his podcasts are really great podcasts yeah um he's a great interviewer and obviously he's got cerebral palsy hasn't he yeah and yeah. And, and obviously uh he and i've kind of worked up like a little friendship so oh. he messages me quite regularly i Bless message him. him quite regularly and he just kind of asks podcasts to be questions. fair don't message me just because you've got cerebral palsy doesn't mean i'm going to change for you yeah absolutely okay. yeah that's a really great point you know what though i actually genuinely i said that to anthony and anthony was like brian's uh like, couldn't everyone uh, yeah exactly <laughs> My favourite bit was where he accidentally starts slagging the side men off and then realises it. <laughs> what? It's so funny. I really am a big Drew Gordy fan and he's just a really nice guy. Yeah, Anthony, you've not met him behind the scenes. No, he, he goes into that. He right. says not, not too nice. Right, OK. I'm, I'm sure sometimes he can be a prick, as we all can. But I think that's nice that he can be a prick. Because you see guys, not the side men, and they all I no disrespect to them. But a lot of them come across as disingenuous. <laughs> I get it. I, we've all seen it. We've all seen it. Let's be honest. The side man, the side men fans are crazy. <laughs> Oh, finally, someone said it right. We love the Sidemen, but their fans are mental. He I, is totally right. I can't wait. If you say anything about the Sidemen, the, the, mate, it's not even worth it. I can't wait to see Zerka's furious reply to this on his next set of yeah. videos. You bastard. You bastard. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> A lot of them are crazy. Especially the females. They're really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Brian, I now see why he's one of your fans. I love this Yeah. Guy. And just to be clear, I'm not trying to dig out the sidemen I'm just saying too late mate too, too late, late. You you've already me. gone on a five you minute tirade no chance point. of the sidemen on your podcast yeah. no, when they see this they're going to be raging I- anyway how did I get under the si- how did I get under the sidemen the point is I love Brian's authenticity I love you too brother okay. if you want to slag the sidemen off don't let me interrupt you mate you get on with it can I show you a fan- he's so lovely Anthony then went on to watch us watching Blue Van Man uh, one thing Anthony didn't do was get rid of his um, tabs I'm glad there's no porn I'm up really there. glad there's but no porn there is we know side- he loves the porn there is some sidemen up there though isn't there so, yeah he's been watching the yeah, sidemen exactly. maybe just to rage a little bit he hate watches them yeah exactly I do that yeah, too mate he it's does fine. thumbs down all the time <laughs> you can always enjoy cheddars there's, there's nothing wrong Nothing offensive or anything about a cheddar. <laughs>
<laughs> nothing offensive about shedding. Yeah, it actually I makes me. It. I love. I love the fact that we're laughing and he's laughing. I love how happy it makes him. But what I love is he's actually such a nice guy. But every now and again, he catches himself almost being too nice. And here's one time where he's a bit too nice. I'm sorry if I annoy you with my laugh. That's just the way I laugh. No, I'm not sorry because it's how I laugh. And if you've got a problem in that, then it's not my fault. I love what a badass this guy no, is. But you have these thoughts, though. Everyone yeah, exactly. who makes a video has these thoughts where you go, you know, I don't want them to think this, I don't want them to think that. But obviously, he's just getting into being a YouTuber and he's starting to realise, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it, mate. Anthony, keep making the videos. We love them. Shout out to Anthony Podcast, he's called his channel. 727 what? subs. Let's get him over the thousand. Come yeah. on. Yeah. What are the chances of, you know, you being born, right, with the name Anthony Podcast? Mate, and then he's been you go on in your life to make he, a podcast. Mate, he's been so lucky. Right, folks, we are back in the van. Back in the van. Back in the van. <laughs> I like that. Today, uh, we are stopping the night at the Cricketers. Um, you watch that little... I know, you were opening it, weren't you, like on the fucking angle. You've already got cream on me seats for the day. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. You set this up. Nothing wrong with a handjob in the van, though. So what we've done, we've just walked through the streets, and we found a street market that uh, does a food market. Nothing like Wuhan. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> no like one that. thought it was like uh, Wuhan, Dave. So I've had a Chinese curry. Ironic. Nothing like Wuhan, but I went for the Chinese option. There it is, folks. For the visually impaired, I'm showing you the chicken curry. Looks all right, look. Yeah, what are you looking at? No, I'm not right, looking okay. at... Do you want to squeeze your line? Go on, then squeeze me. squeeze your line? Squeeze me line. <laughs> These two have got so much sexual tension. I love it. You imagine she still goes, come on, Dave, let's go upstairs. And he's like, oh. But all over? Oh, go on, then. You're starting out to... Uh... Oh, nearly hit me in the eye. Oh, God. See? They really do they flirt. So sexual. I, I love how much they flirt with each other, even now. Let's tuck the fuck in. Go on, then. Go on, then. Oh, fucking hell, that's good. Please, can we go out for a meal with Dave? Like, I want to go out for a meal with Dave and... Should uh, we film and it? Yeah, and just have a lovely evening out. We'll literally make it like a podcast, but over a meal. Does that make sense? We could just do it around, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you don't like leaving the house. It's the practicalities of filming it, isn't it? Imagine... You've got to think about production, Lawrence. Well, you know I don't do that. Um, got to admit, I do love Blue Van Man. Uh, go over, subscribe to his channel. He's on 122k. And that was true news for you lot. This Sunday, though, it's Manchester United versus Spurs. We're live on the kickoff on the True Jordan YouTube channel from four. All the boys are going to be there. We're going to be talking all the football. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Hit the fucking uh, like button. Hit the subscribe button if you have enjoyed this episode. And we'll see yous on the kickoff.